And under the bows Hey everyone, welcome back. What we're going to do today is build a full-size bed frame uh, for my daughter out of just 12 2x4s. Construction grade material, really cheap, between 3, well, 250 to 350 uh, per 2x4. So, you know, do the math on that. It's, you know, less than $50, which is amazing. Full-size bed frame. And it's beautiful. So, what we're going to do, everybody always, always is so concerned that they don't have the tools out of the homestead. And I always recommend that you keep acquiring tools for your homestead. As many as you can. Uh, the best quality that you can in certain circumstances. Um, but you can construct this using just these simple tools right here and these are highly recommended I wrote a blog article on this on my uh, on my website countrylivingexperience.com um, but anyway here we are a skill saw a circular saw a tape measure a speed square one of the most important tools to have get one of these first because it'll give you the ability to, to make uh, 90 degree cuts lines for 90 degree cuts it's very important uh, random, random orbital sander, the almighty drill, 11 years and going strong, right away. I do have a second area backup though. Uh, a pocket hole jig, pencil, obviously. And that's really all you need. Now, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to show you how to do it with, with this saw, but I have a, a chop saw that you've probably seen me use before and I'm going to use it. Um, because it's not necessary for me to keep using this, but you can. That's why I'm showing you. Okay, I have a cut list for all of the pieces, and I will put that in the description below. So, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize lap joints. So I made this for a different project, but it's great to be able to see it. Actually, this is a half lap joint. It makes it very strong. I've seen this uh, bed done before, and I'll put a reference to it also. And I'm going to make some modifications per the style that I want it, and some additions to it for my daughter. She's a toddler. I don't want her rolling out of bed. We're going to make a side rail for it. Anyway, let's get started on this. I hope you enjoy the project. It's super simple and easy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do per our cut list, measure out all of our pieces. So we save time and we can just start cutting. I've got everything written down. It's really important to do that. Have a plan of attack before you start and then we're just going to go. So also I wanted to mention something. Let me bring you down here. You are going to want to find uh, studs that are, they say kiln dried on them, or KD. So here we go, we can read this one there. Kiln dried, heat treated, and this is Douglas fir, D fir. So they also have ones that are green, or GR. You do not want those, because they will warp on you, and they, they kind of feel wet. Uh, so don't get those, get the kiln dried ones and you're going to be much, much happier. It's going to be a better project. All right, we've measured out almost all of our cuts, but remember your saw blade is an eighth of an inch thick. So you can't go progressively on the board. You have to, if you're going to use one board, you can make two uh, cuts on it initially from one end measure and from the other end measure the two pieces you need and then the remainder you're going to have to measure out again and cut that last piece from whatever is left on your cut plan here so let's get started doing our cutting now when i'm cutting with a skill saw or a circular saw uh, i like to have my speed square on the board 
So I can ride this side of the skill saw along the speed square, hold the speed square, and I'll get a, a straighter cut. Because the tendency is to wobble back and forth with these. You always kind of need a straight edge unless you have an expensive like Festool saw, which comes or a track saw, uh, Festool track saw, any other brand track saw. I don't know if they're really worth it, in my opinion. You can usually improvise like this. All right, everyone. Now what we're going to do is cut our half-left joints on our headboard and footboard rails and styles. And to do that, we're going to need to come down half the depth of a 2x4, which is 3 quarters of an inch, and in the full uh, width of a 2x4, which is three and a half inches. So you can either measure that out or place the 2x4 on the end and scribe it. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use just a skill saw to cut that end out. And what we've done is we've placed our speed square with one of our quick clamps here, our Irwin quick clamps, at the precise point where we need it to make that first cut. And then we're going to successfully, successively cut out to the edge. As you can see, we've made a lot of cuts here from our first cut line out. And what we're going to do is you can take a hammer and just knock these out. And that's going to help us create our joint here. And then we, what we can do is we can clean them up with a wood chisel. All right, we're back, and one more step before we start assembling. We need to make the notch for the rails, the side rails, and that's really easily done. We're going to clamp both boards here back to back, and they're going to be the opposite. So because one's on one side of the bed, one's on the other side of the bed. We're going to measure up and make our notch for our 2x4. We need to make that the size of the end of the 2x4, so one and a half deep by three and a half high. And for us, we're gonna start it, uh, we're gonna come up eight inches, which we believe is a good, good size uh, to fit things under the bed. So up eight inches, up another three and a half, and then one and a half deep, make our same cuts with our circular saw as we did the other notches. And then we can start assembling. All right, now that we've got everything cut, it's time to assemble. What we're going to do is we're going to glue and screw each corner lap joint, and then we are going to use our um, pocket hole jig here, and we're going to attach this cross rail and these rails here for the headboard. Nice thing about these lap joints is they hold a very square corner when you're drilling, which is nice. But we're also going to check for square. A couple of other methods. You can use an actual square, which is great. You can use your speed square this way. And you can also use the diagonal method, which of course is to measure across from corner to corner on both sides, 67 and 3 quarters, and it should be the exact same. 67 and 3 quarters. Perfect. All right, our next step is to attach our pocket hole jig and start drilling holes. Now remember, you want to secure your pocket hole jig with a clamp or a pair of vice grips and also secure your project 
to your work surface, whatever that may be. We're going to get started. We only have a single uh, pocket hole jig here because it was affordable at the time. So it's going to take us a little while, but we're going to go around, we're going to draw all of our holes, and screw everything together. Here's our assembled headboard. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for our footboard. Alright, the next step here is to glue and screw our support pieces to our side rails. We're going to measure down three quarters of an inch from the top of the rail. And we're going to come in an inch and a half from the end because that end piece here, you can see it right here. It's going to step in and it's going to attach to our headboard and our footboard. Hey everyone, we've got our side rails together with our supports. And we're going to do one center cross rail here. We're going to utilize our pocket hole jig. And we're going to do that because we want to be able to take this center support out and put it back together if we have to move it in the house. That's going to give us plenty of stability because we're going to make a modification to my original plan. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. And it's going to be for this center area here. You'll see. Alright, look, it's coming together. We've got our headboard and footboard together with our rails here, and we're going to attach the rails to these uh, head and footboards using these lag screws. We're going to drill in here, and we're going to countersink using a Forstner bit. Everyone, we're getting really close. Check it out. She's looking good. And as you can see, we use plywood here in the center to support the mattress. And in my opinion, that's a cheaper option than using 1x3s or 1x4s to span uh, that distance for support. You can do the math and check it out at your local big, big box store and maybe it works out for you. I'm not sure, but this is also a more stable way uh, to construct it in my opinion to support that mattress fully. Anyway, I'm going to screw this down all the way around and then we're going to get to the massive amount of sanding that we have to do to get this thing nice and ready for my daughter to lay in it. Then it's on to paint and then I'll show you the final project. Hey everybody, here is the finished product. We are waiting for the mattress to arrive today and she is super excited to get on her big girl bed. We don't have the side rail attached yet, but we're just going to screw that into the side. That's off to the side right now and while we wait for the mattress. But I didn't show you the painting part of the process. I didn't think it was something you all wanted to see. It's pretty easy to paint and it's kind of boring anyway. So just like the sanding. But there it is. It is kind of heavy with the plywood on it. So that's a good thing and a bad thing, so it's heavy duty, and, but you're probably going to need one, two people to, to carry it in, uh, especially the, the middle portion, or you can just unscrew the plywood. I, didn't, I chose not to do that. I had a buddy help me carry this from our barn into the house. The other pieces are light, so that's no big deal, but it's the center portion. Anyway, 
I hope you like this build and let us know if you want to see something else from us in the future. We appreciate all of you being here. All of our subscribers, thank you so much. What helps us out is sharing this video. Share the video, like it, and comment on it. Let us know anything you want. Let us know your questions, your comments, whatever. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.